So again, we talked about injecting into a Unix uh, shell. We talked about injecting into the programming language. Uh, another language that gets injected into is uh, SQL. Uh, and uh, so SQL injection is, is pretty uh, prevalent. And so a SQL injection itself, it, it's kind of funny. It's pretty expensive. Like this thing has cost a lot of people a lot of money. This is just an example. Um, uh, this particular SQL injection vulnerability cost almost 300 million. So that's a lot for such a simple exploit uh, that we'll see um, 100 million credit cards and then 650 financial services were, were compromised. And so that's a lot. Um, SQL injection can be extremely impactful as if that wasn't impactful enough. Uh, this particular SQL injection uh, exposed 32 million user accounts. And we just talked about password, uh, credential stuffing, credential spraying. This is a lot of credentials to, to have at your disposal. Uh, and the, you know what really makes this, so we also talked about how password storage, we need to be storing the hashes that are salted, not the actual plain text. This was really bad because uh, this particular flaw uh, allowed 32 million uh, accounts to be exposed and the database that they stored the account information in, uh, they stored the passwords in plain text. This is one of those examples where if you're reusing your password, you're as that password is strong as the weakest provider storing your password if you're reusing it. And if it was a, a Rocku, this is so old, I don't expect any of you to have had a, a Rocku account. Uh, but if you did sign up for an account on Rocku, you're, you're, and you're reusing that credential everywhere, you're in big trouble. Um, and this is why things like OAuth are, are, are better uh, for you. Uh, SQL injection is ironic. And so uh, a while back, Sun and, and now Oracle, they bought this MySQL.com. Uh, so MySQL.com is an open source uh, MySQL, uh, SQL database. And so uh, the MySQL.com and Sun got, in, got hacked via SQL injection. So that's, that's irony. Um, SQL injection, unfortunately, is still happening. That's why I'm still teaching this, because you would expect, like, we actually know what the vulnerability is and what the remediation is, but it's still everywhere. So here's an example where it's happening in a security plugin for WordPress. Uh, and this is this Loginizer plugin. Uh, and so uh, basically, it doesn't sanitize the username and then leaves this, the SQL statements within it intact. And then this allows uh, someone to actually inject uh, SQL statements into that backend database. Uh, here's another recent example. This is actually in the security device. And so the security device is actually making you less secure, not more secure. And so this is a, a zero day on, on a firewall that's in like, and this is pre, a pre-auth SQL injection bug is pretty devastating. When they say pre-auth, it, it means I don't have to have an account on this uh, firewall like the administrator account in order to actually get this injection uh, to work. Uh, here's another one. We talked about this one before, the Gab uh, social media network. So we talked about the second time they got uh, hacked, which was the OAuth, the OAuth tokens uh, not being expired. Well, they actually got attacked first with a SQL injection attack that basically the CTO of the company put into the open source <laughs> software that they were using. So, so the, uh, this is basically this is a, a quick karma, I guess, is what this might be, where basically um, the injection of the vulnerability uh, by the CTO ended up causing them to lose all of their data, including that OAuth token that was used to come back around for the second time. Uh, and of course, uh, whenever you talk about SQL injection, uh, this is the XKCD that you, you have to actually show. <laughs> uh, it's funny. So there's an example where the mom uh, basically uh, appends as the, the last name of her son uh, as this, which is based, this is basically a SQL statement that drops the, the, the student table in the backend database. And then uh, she's trying to teach this, the, the school a lesson about about their, their, uh, their sanitizing the database inputs. And so this is the little Bobby Tables um, comic that uh, really popularized, uh, well, made people aware of SQL injection on a large 
scale, even non-technical people. Okay, uh, and it's even funnier when someone uh, registers a company name uh, as a SQL injection uh, attack. So this is the name of the company is, is basically semicolon drop table companies. And what was really funny is that in the comments of this, uh, someone wrote, oh, little Bobby Tables is all grown up uh, and became this, uh, became this company. Okay, so what is this thing? Um, this is a walkthrough of a, a classical SQL injection attack. Uh, you have this three-tier architecture. Maybe you have a web front end, uh, and then you have a bunch of backend stuff that's stored in SQL. Uh, so SQL databases are one way of storing all your backend data. Uh, and this application server is accessible. Obviously, it's intended to be accessible by uh, external users. And this is a picture of the adversary in this case. And so the adversary goes to the company and says, oh, uh, here is a form to, to allow you to look up your uh, uh, using your account number uh, a particular SKU. So these are uh, product IDs, basically, is what these SKU numbers are. And so the adversary, uh, the canonical SQL injection is a single quote or one is equal to one, followed by a comment character and another single quote. And so this application server is like, oh, this is your account number. Um, I'm gonna take this account number and I'm gonna include it in a SQL statement that will look up your account number on this backend database and, and see what, it, what, what uh, SKU numbers are associated with that account number. And that's the initial request. The, the uh, front end uh, server will produce this SQL query in order to get the data asked for by this form. And so the SQL statement might, might look like this. It says select some data from this accounts table where the account number is. And it's expecting a number, but it's getting this string. And uh, this entire thing is basically a SQL statement that gets uh, injected. And then as it turns out, the or one is equal to one is, is basically a disjunction that gives you everything. So this is gonna give you all the accounts uh, coming back. And then the database runs this query, gets you the entire table of accounts, and then sends this table back to the, the web front end. And then basically all the accounts and all the account numbers are sent back to the user. Okay, here's another example. This is from the Port Swigger uh, site. Uh, this uses a different style. It's a, it uses a union statement. So this is another, this, this is all SQL. And so one of the things that this shows you is that you can just basically, your attack strings are arbitrary SQL. So if you're really good at SQL programming, then basically the world is, the, the, the SQL database is your oyster basically. Uh, and so here's an example, it's, you, it's doing a union and it's trying to get all the username and passwords uh, into this table. And so even though it's trying to get the products, uh, this union select uh, is basically taking all of the user information and appending it into this, this uh, the result of this query, and then all the usernames and passwords are dumped into this UI uh, that's supposed to be giving you products, uh, but it's giving you credentials instead. So that is the pattern. And so in order to attack this pattern, uh, I first need to talk a little bit about SQL uh, and some just rudimentary SQL. Um, and I know some of you have already taken the database course, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna belabor the SQL uh, here. Um, and so SQL is the canonical way that we actually go for a relational database. We typically interact with a relational database using these uh, SQL statements. Uh, and so there are some examples of this SQLite, uh, if you, are, have done the cloud class, Postgres and MySQL if you're running your databases on a remote server. So when we're using SQLite, we're typically using it in the, in the local file system. But you would typically run your SQL server as a separate tier of a three-tier architecture as we sh showed in the example. Uh, Microsoft SQL Server, uh, Oracle, DB2 are other instances of SQL servers that you'll see out there. And you'll see for your, um, for the labs in Port Swigger, Port Swigger actually gives you examples of these vulnerable servers across Oracle, Postgres, and I think they might do uh, Microsoft SQL as well, just to show you the different ways that this can be exploited. Okay, uh, so just some basic commands. Uh, if you wanna 
create a table or create a database. This is a SQL statement. And these are commands that the web application will be giving to the backend SQL server to get stuff done. So you'll see that this string will be passed from the, from the front end to the database server back and forth. So creating a database, creating a table within the database, this would be done at startup of your application. And then, um, so the drop table example, if you want to delete the date, uh, a database or a table, uh, then you would use this directory uh, back and forth. Uh, so here's an example of creating a table in a database. Say I want to create a table called users. It's got four columns, uh, an ID that's an integer, a username, and a password that are text strings. And then maybe an is admin flag that's a Boolean. And so that'll be that'll create this table in the database in the SQL database. It's called users, has these four columns, and it's initially blank. And then you would do something like this. You would insert, like I want to create some users and passwords. Say someone created a new account, and I want to insert into the user table the values uh, one, Bob, password, and true. And what this will do is create this row, one, Bob, password, and true. Likewise, uh, the second entry is Alice with a password of secure, and then uh, the is admin is false. And this will build out this table. OK, so we're going to use this table. Uh, in our SQL in, as a SQL injection target. Um, and uh, so once you have created that table, uh, typically your web application is going to query into it. So it's going to be inserting and updating entries, uh, but it's also going to need to query into it because once I have stored the username and password information of users, when a user tries to log in, I'm going to need to use SQL to pull out the password in order to make sure that the passwords uh, match. And so you would typically, the front end would often just send that query string into the SQL server that's, that's storing this database. And then the, the result of that query is just gonna be returned uh, to the front end. Okay, this actual query is done uh, using these keywords in SQL, select from and where. And so I'm gonna use the example of logging into an account. I have a web application that needs to authenticate uh, users logging in and say these users have created this uh, this account information. So Bob has set his password to password. Alice has set hers to secure. Uh, within the server, I have this query template that says, uh, based on the username that this thing gives me, I am going to ask, I'm going to pull out of the user table the password and the whether or not this user is an administrator um based on what username this is given to me here now um, in this case i'm storing the password in plain text you would obviously want to do this as a hash uh but like this is just for uh for an example so then let's say the user posts the username of alice and a password of secure uh then what the server is going to do is like i know what alice gave me is secure i need to see whether or not this password matches what's in this database and so that's what this secure, or that's what the SQL statement is going to do. And so in place of this uh, template that's got the question mark, I am actually going to fill in uh, Alice. And then what's happening with this query, I'm going to send this over to this database to, uh, to execute. Uh, and that's, that's the next step. Okay, so uh, we have this query now. We're going to say, um, I need to get Alice's password, and this query is going to give it to me. So how does this happen? Uh, it says select password and is admin. So what this does is it goes to this table and it selects these two columns uh, from the table. So that's the first part of this. So select password and is admin from the users table. And this will go and it'll claim these two uh, columns. Uh, and, and that's what this, this part of the statement does. Uh, and then it will give me what's in blue. Sorry, that's a little washed out for you on this projector. Uh, but trust me, these two columns are now blue. <laughs> and then uh, the next part is like, uh, so the rest of this statement says, uh, well, uh, so I have these two columns uh, highlighted. It says where username is equal to Alice. And so now it's going to use this predicate that uh, to reduce uh, the data that, that is selected. So you don't need both of these. Uh, you don't need Bob's uh, information. So it says, uh, only give me the stuff from Alice. And so then you, you get these two, uh, you get only get this row um, as a result. So then this is what you get returned. Uh, 
uh, the password is secure, is admin is false. And this gets sent back to the web front end. And so here it is in the web front end. This goes back to the, to the front end server. And now uh, Alice supplied this as a password. The password is secure and it compares. And so the login is successful. And uh, there's, no there's no admin privileges given to Alice because this is false uh, that gets returned. So this is the thing working as intended. Um, the thing working as not intended will be next. Uh, and so what is the perfect password? We went through the password exercise of, of passwords that have actually good attributes or a perfect username. And uh, it would be this. And you're like, oh, that's strange. What is this thing? Well, it's got an uppercase letter. So that, that passes one of the tests. It's got a lowercase letter that passes another test. Like, it's like how strong is my password uh, meter? It's gonna like, oh yeah, checks that, that box. It's got a number in it. Uh, it's got a special character. It's got lots of special characters actually. This is a, this is a solid password or username. Uh, it's 16 characters, it's quite long. So it's like uh, correct horse, correct horse is about, no, correct horse battery at least, uh, length. Uh, and then, but it also logs you into all sorts of things. Uh, so this is, this, is, this is awesome. So how is this gonna work? Um, we're going to use something similar to this uh, back in our example. So we have this basic SQL injection uh, or basic, basic SQL uh, uh, statement being done. So this is what we did before. Username is Alice, password is secure, and it generates this SQL string, right? And so if you look at this SQL string, uh, the adversarial input is the username. And you see the username is delimited by these two single quotes. Let's just say programmatically, that's how they, they wrote the, the, the query string. So if I choose this as a username, I, because this is a single quote, I'm gonna say, you know what? I'm gonna inject a single quote into this uh, SQL string to see if it gets evaluated uh, and breaks the syntax of the SQL query so I can add more SQL into this query than already exists. And uh, I'm gonna in inject this SQL predicate or one is equal to one. Uh, and you know, I, I'm trying to pair up the single quotes so that this, this statement won't give me a syntax error. Um, so, so that's basically what, what this is doing. Uh, so this is, this is uh, the walkthrough of what's going on. Uh, you select this thing from the user table. Uh, it does the same thing as before. It gets this one is uh, this username is equal to one, uh, which is basically what this is, and then this predicate will will reselect the the whole thing. And sorry about the the, the color wash, uh, unfortunately. Okay, so what this is going to do, it's going to dump both entries out of this table, right? It's going to dump the password true and secure three uh, secure false. Both of these things are going to get returned on this username. Uh, so that's that's the issue here. Uh, one of the things that we talked about was that it was using a single quote. Uh, developers can use whatever syntax they would like as their string delimiter, right? And so this might work on some, this attack might work on some applications, web applications, but you're gonna have to try a whole bunch of other characters as well based on the context that you're injecting into. Uh, so that's that's what this is. And so really what you're gonna do is you're gonna probe all of the, all of the uh, form data, like all the forms in a web application. You're gonna probe every single one of them with these special characters to see if any of them results in an error. And as soon as you see an error happening when you've given it a double quote, a single quote, you know you've injected into the SQL interpreter and then you can start probing for interesting things. Um, and so here's an example. I start probing with uh, single quotes and then I get this error. Now, hopefully, that's the other, the, the other part of this is like, hopefully you should never see this as a, so you would never want the adversary to see something like this, but I send in a single quote and then MySQL2 says, hey, you know what? This query's broken. And so you can see select star from users where username is the single quote character and password is equal to blank. This breaks the syntax of SQL because there's, bas there's basically a string here, username is equal to null, and then another string that directly follows it. And that's gonna break SQL uh, altogether. And so you can infer from this error 
that the query that was pro being processed was this. Um, and so you can then infer that the query statement was probably this. Single quoted escape of the username, single quoted uh, uh, password as well. So here's the take home point of, of this is that one of the things that you should uh, make sure you do is hide all these errors from your adversary, right? Because you don't wanna give the adversary any error strings that might give you, get, reveal how it is you're handling the, the user input. And that's, that's one, of the, one, of the, one of the parts of this. The other part is to try all the different characters. Um, okay, so some examples. Uh, in PHP, I have the SQL statement. I have the select star from users where username is equal to. And then, uh, so this is the first part of the string. And in PHP, the concatenation is, is done with a, a dot operator. And then I pull the username from the form and then I concatenate it with another string. Uh, and then uh, I, I then pull the password from the form. And then at the very end, I'm gonna end this SQL statement with another single quote to end the password string and then a semicolon to terminate the actual um, statement. And then I'm going to take this string and just send it into my SQL query. If you ever see a pattern like this, this is vulnerable and you should get rid of it as soon as possible. Um, uh, because basically you're, con you're actually constructing a SQL string on top of untrusted input. And that's the issue. And so if you supply a username of foo and a password of bar, uh, if you inject that into here, this is what's supposed to happen is fine. You know, uh, this is the, the SQL, this is basically a template uh, that, that's here. And then you're just filling in the green things with username of foo and password of bar. So everything works. This is the intended behavior. Uh, and so you only get the row that has foo and a password of bar. If the supplied parameters are these uh, statements, so the foo single quote or one is equal to one and the password is bar one is equal to one, uh, this is the SQL statement that gets passed back into the database. Uh, so in this case, you have uh, included this disjunction that says where username is either this or one is equal to one, which is always true. So we're, we're true. And then password is bar or one is equal to one. So this is where true and true. So this is gonna be always true. And then you're gonna basically get all the users from this backend database. And so this is, this is the danger of constructing the query string out of input that the adversary controls. Okay. Um, uh, question or comment on the uh, in the chat: Would naming your attributes in non-standard ways deter SQL injections? That does, uh, but this can be coupled with uh, another mechanism for exposing the names that you're using. And in fact, actually, this is part of the Port Swigger Labs later on, where you're like, "Hey, I don't necessarily know the name of the username password fields in the in the application, but uh, what you'll be doing is you'll be investigating that you'll be because this is you get." access to all the SQL commands, you can eventually expose that column name uh, in subsequent queries. Um, yeah, and so it, it, it's, uh, it's not even obscurity, security through obscurity because, because of cer certain facilities in the database. Um, oh yeah, so another, so a uh, comment in the, in the chat, uh, use a comma within your password to mess with the CSV so that your backend, your breached password is, is, uh, is stored uh, in a messed up way. Yeah, that's, 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 a, that's kind of funny actually. Yeah, so, so yeah, if they're exporting uh, the data they collect uh, from this as a CSV file and you have a comma, so it works both way, injection, and syntax breaking works both ways. So even the, so that if the adversary is gonna use it to compromise data, then maybe you can use it to mess up the adversary. Um, that's funny, yeah. Okay, so this returns all the rows uh, in users. So hopefully even if you're a beginner to SQL, you can, you can get, you can get a, a flavor for how this works. Uh, so what happens if the application breaks uh, if more than one row is returned? 
So the web application is probably expecting a single uh, piece of data back. And if it goes and it finds like you pass back a list instead of a single piece of data, it's gonna blow up. Uh, you can use the limit keyword uh, to basically prune the number. And so instead of uh, uh, using, um, using that uh, canonical uh, thing without a limit, you just add a limit one to that injection and then you'll get back the, the, a single entry. Uh, so that, that, that particular query will just take the first one. Okay, uh, I mentioned comment injection in the code injection slides. Uh, the same thing for SQL. So if you don't want to deal with pairing this single quote in this case, so here you're injecting into this string concatenation. And part of this thing is uh, when at the very end of this thing, you have this, this stray quote and uh, a semicolon. You have to pair up all of these single quotes because if there's an odd number of them, the thing is going to break. Uh, moreover, if there is a part of this query you don't want executed, you kind of want to be able to comment out that, that, that code. And so uh, you can actually inject a comment character and get rid of it. Uh, and so in SQL, there are multiple comment characters. There's a, the hash, and it depends on your backend database. Uh, so some databases, uh, their SQL, uh, comment character is the pound. Uh, other ones, it's the double dash. Uh, and so here's an example where the username is a uh, single quote or one equal one with a hash. And then we'll just say the, the password is anything. And uh, in this case, if you have a SQL statement as we had before, uh, where the username is this and the password is this, if you send this to the SQL interpreter and the SQL interpreter has this hash as the comment character, it basically is gonna eliminate the other part of this query. And then what you're gonna execute is basically this. Select star from users where username is equal to null or one is equal to one and it's gonna give you everything. It's gonna basically ignore the password field because you commented the thing out. Okay, uh, one of the things to note is that sometimes you actually have to put a space at the end of this comment character in order for it to, to actually uh, hold. Okay, another part of SQL injection is the union injection. So union is a SQL uh, directive that will merge two tables together that you specify. Uh, so here's an example of the users table again. Um, if I called, uh, well, so one of the caveats for doing a union is that the number of columns in the two tables that you're trying to combine, the number of columns have to be the same. Uh, and so if you have a four column table uh, and you're doing a select from users and you're trying to union another table uh, to this query, if you did something like this, union select one, 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 and this basically is a, a table that has three columns of one set to it, you'll see that this is three columns and that's four columns and this is not gonna work. Uh, if you, sorry about the, the washout, this is supposed to be all red. <laughs> I know, this is kind of an eye chart. Uh, but if you did one, one, one null, it's gonna append this table, uh, one, one, one and null. And then what you're gonna get is it, this is gonna work. And what you'll do is you'll end up doing this query on this combined table rather than just the, the original table itself. This is really important because you could be querying the user table but this uh, union will allow you to add information from other tables and bring them into your results. That's pretty powerful, uh, especially if you know some of the other tables that that web application, that database that's serving the web application has. Okay. So this is how you would, it would work operationally. I uh, have a username and I post this injection that also does a union select one, 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 because I know it's got four columns. And then I have this comment character injected as well to, re to remove the rest of this, uh, the rest of this uh, statement. And then, uh, so in this case, I have these ta uh, the, the similar table, except the is admin is an integer instead of a Boolean because like SQLite, actually there is no Boolean in SQLite. It's either an integer. Um, it's, it's, uh, the Boolean's done as an integer in SQLite. Uh, and this is just to show you the power of, uh, of using this select. 
And so say I have this where I'm selecting the password and is admin from the users where that username is uh, whatever is here. And then I have a pound character, comment that thing out. Uh, and my union as part of this. I, I need a username that is one. And then I'm going to append a table of one, 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 one to the, to the, uh, the base of this uh, table before I actually do the query. And so what is this going to do? And my password that I inject is also one. And this is key. So what it's going to do is it's going to execute this union. And it's going to add that table of uh, that row of ones. And then it's going to run the query. And the query is select password and is admin from users. Uh, and that's what's going to happen here. It's going to take these two columns again, uh, where username is equal to one. Now, initially, there is no username that's one up here. But because you appended this row, there now is a username that's one. Uh, and so it's actually going to get you this, this part of it. Uh, so that's what, what gets returned. So what gets returned is password is equal to one and is admin is equal to one. And it turns out, look, your password is one. And now the front end is like the passwords match and it's an account that has administrator privileges. Uh, so that's, that's probably not something you want to have happen uh, in this particular case. So it's basically like uh, logging yourself in as administrator uh, using this particular username. Okay. Uh, are there questions about that? Okay, you're going to get a lot of practice with unions in your in your labs, at least. Um, uh, one of the things that we talked about with unions is that you have to know the number of columns you're you're uh, you're doing the union onto, because if you don't have the right number of columns, the query is going to fail. Uh, and so, one way to test the backend database is to do the injection and uh, to use this order by uh, a SQL directive to figure out how many columns that table has. And so the order by predicate is basically gonna sort the rows that are returned based on the column number that you give order by with. And so uh, order by X is only gonna work if the, the number that you specify as a column number is less than or equal to the total number of columns in the database, right? It doesn't make sense to say order by five and there's only four columns in this database. Uh, so you could do order by three uh, as part of this uh, query and that'll work. Order by four is gonna work, but then order by five is not gonna work. It's gonna give you an error. And that's when you know the number of columns in this database or in this table is, uh, is four. Okay. So someone mentioned uh, randomly naming your user table, your, your database and the, uh, and the columns in the database, randomly naming it so that they can't be targeted with simple SQL injection. And that is uh, one way of avoiding uh, just these, uh, basically the script kitty attacks where uh, you're, they're always looking for the users table. Uh, the thing that really bites you, bites people who implement this, especially if you're using MySQL, is this special SQL table called information schema. Information schema is basically a meta table in most SQL databases that gives you information on all the tables that it has and all the columns in all those tables. And so what you would do is you could inject into this vulnerable uh, application queries that probe the information schema table to get all the columns and all the tables uh, that you need. And that's the idea. And so the two tables, I mean, information schema has more than, than these two tables, but these are the ones that you would target as an adversary. Um, so information schema.tables has all the names, information schema.columns has all the columns in all those tables. Um, and it's indexed by the table name uh, as well. And so you could do this as an iterative process to get these, uh, these names. Um, okay, so here's an example. Suppose this URL is injectable. Uh, it's got a, it's an, a blog maybe, it's a PHP blog and it's got an article ID, say look up article number five. And uh, I want to uh, have this thing return all of the, the, the different attributes of the, the backend database that's storing these articles. And so let's assume we've already figured out that uh, it's injectable and this, this is basically querying 
the database for an article, article ID of five. And then that query just returns three columns. We've already done the enumeration. Uh, so the first one is like, hey, maybe I need to find a particular table. Say I'm interested in user information and I wanna figure out what table stores user accounts. And so this is something I would do, give me article five, and then also return the union of select table name, table name, table name, because I need three columns in order to do this union. And it's the same data. So you'll get repetitive data in the output, uh, but at least it'll match. And then select all the table names from information schema.tables. And then this is gonna give me the names of all the tables in the database uh, returned to me. So let's uh, assume that what comes back is that, hey, there's a table called user account in the database. And then I'm gonna give it another query. I'm gonna say uh, union select column name, column name, column name from the information schema columns database where the table name is that user account. And this is gonna give me all the columns in the user accounts table. So if you named it fancy, uh, the, the fancy name is gonna be exposed and this will be part of your lab. Uh, part of your labs this week is to do that process um, uh, in, in, in practice. And then the third one is, okay, well, I, now I want all the username and passwords in this database. So then, uh, you know, article number five, Union select username, password, and then I need a third column. So I'll give, you know, send the password back twice from that user accounts. And then this is a valid query because I now know the column names. Uh, so yeah, all of this stuff allows you to then from the information schema table, just get you the entire database. And usually when you have an injection, uh, basically the entire, the entire database is your oyster is basically the, the problem here. Okay, um, I'm gonna skip MongoDB injections, but like different databases have different languages that you can inject into. Um, and the same attacks uh, exist for NoSQL databases that, that uh, have their own query language uh, like MongoDB. Um, okay, let's talk about prevention. Uh, there's a cheat sheet you can click on here if you wanna uh, look at uh, different preventions. Uh, the first thing is input validation, sanitizing the inputs, never trusting user input. Uh, there are two approaches here. There's block listing input so that you deny the use of characters and keywords such as the apostrophe or the, or the double quote. You can also uh, do an allow listing function where you're only allowing specific characters uh, such as alphanumeric uh, characters. And this is really annoying because I, Actually, for me, it's really annoying. I've got like a dash in my first name and I, that thing gets filtered out in so many places. I don't know if it's, it might be for the double dash of a SQL comment character, but then it makes some, some of like my, my actually official ID not match my actually name on my account. So, and I'm like, okay, well that's filtering. That, there are some side effects uh, of doing this kind of stuff, uh, which is a problem like making everything alphanumeric um, and uh, who is it? Is it Elon Musk's uh, son? It's got special characters in, in his, yeah, you wouldn't be able, like, what, what would be his name? Uh, yeah, yeah. Or uh, the artist formerly known as Prince was a symbol. Like, yeah, that would be, that would be hard. Be yeah, a Unicode. Yeah, what do you do with Unicode usernames? I don't know. Um, the other thing is to, again, encode all the user input. So you know SQL has these special sort of directives. So maybe you would encode all of these things um, before passing it. Um, and then the other uh, issue is, and this is a mistake that often happens, people don't validate on the server. They put it in JavaScript on the front end and just assume that nobody's gonna po poke into that. And so um, the, uh, the architecture is to, to, to always make sure these checks are on the server and not on the client. It's just an animation of why you want, want to do it on the server and not the client. So here's a phone number thing. And say you have some fancy JavaScript uh, filtering against SQL injection attacks. Uh, and because there's no SQL injection here, it says, okay, you can submit your phone number and this goes to the server and all is fine and good. Uh, you you uh, have a SQL injection as a phone number and then the JavaScript uh, fails and then it doesn't go in. Um, but what you can do is you could have, um, just run a proxy uh, and then modify this request. Uh, 
Uh, so uh, that's the that's the the workaround for for a JavaScript check. And so here's a, a an example. You submit this. Uh, it's okay from the JavaScript, and then you have a proxy and there's any number of these proxies, zap, postman, burp, um, just changes this uh, to the SQL injection and then, and then you're done. Uh, so, so yeah, always keep this in mind when you have an adversary who is proxying these connections and then you should be good for, for developing your web application. Um, you actually do wanna change how you program uh, your web application and the way it interacts with the backend. This is the way to prevent it uh, um, in a way that you're, you can be sure of. One, and there's any number of ways to get rid of this. Uh, the, the basic problem is that you're constructing the query string on untrusted input and then sending it directly to the backend. And so you need to do things like this, which is, this one is an example of a prepared statement. Uh, and what this prepared statement does is that it does a pre-interpreted query routine when uh, based on the uh, a, a template that you give it. And then what it does is that at runtime, it just fills these uh, values in as data. And uh, it doesn't allow the SQL interpreter to interpret the thing that's tagged as data as uh, SQL itself. So that's the idea of a prepared statement. Um, and this is very similar to Python F strings, right? Like you, you explicitly give it a, a template and then the values are only interpreted and injected into that thing uh, after the fact. It's not evaluated as part of the SQL. Um, and so here's an example of the vulnerable use. You're actually getting the two parameters and you're concatenating it into the SQL statement. And then this is where, and then you're just taking that query, sending it in directly. This is a prepared statement where you say, this is the template. So it's only gonna execute this, uh, these SQL uh, parameters and everything else does not contain SQL. And then you just set the string inside of them. Uh, first parameter is the name, second parameter is the ID. Uh, parameterized queries are very similar. Uh, so there's an example of parameterized query and usually you, you have either the question mark or the percent %s as delimiters, which will specify actual uh, data types. And so this is the parameter, uh, the parameterized query, and then you create some parameters for it. And then when you execute, you give it the query template, and then you give it the exact parameters that are associated with these two parameters. Again, it's very similar to an F string. Um, the other way that I didn't mention here is to use object relational mapping. Um, we talk about this in the cloud class where you just hide the SQL from the developer. You treat the backend database like an object store. Uh, and then you just write your programming language, uh, create a new class of a user. Say I create a user class and I say user store. And then some object relational mapping library is gonna do that insertion. So it's gonna proxy that SQL. And then that library is not injectable. Like that library has been programmed to look for these injections. So that's another way of taking, the, taking it out of the hands of the developer and putting it into frameworks that can be checked uh, is the idea. And I, sorry, I didn't put that example here, but that's, the, that's, a, that's another way. Um, so, so if any of you Python developers are, uh, have done this, it's uh, like SQL alchemy is a way of just programming directly into the database without actually handling the SQL statements. Uh, so that's, that's another uh, countermeasure. Okay, uh, again, I have a bunch of video walkthroughs uh, that from a previous uh, class. And I'm, if, if I have time at the end of this uh, class, I, I will also do some of these walkthroughs. Uh, so I have the one from the command injection. I might do these two um, as well at the end of class. Um, but I, I now wanna talk a little bit about blind SQL injection. Uh, well, first, are there any questions about SQL? Actually, let me look at the chat. Um, all right. Okay, I think I'm good there. All right, so let's talk about blind SQL injection. Um, one of the things that we saw earlier is that I injected SQL and I got an error string back. 
or I injected SQL and I got the results of the SQL query in its entirety back in, in the payload. It's often the case that when you do a SQL injection, you might not get the direct information that you're looking for back. So what do you do as an adversary if that happens? Uh, and what you can do is that you can look for side effects of the execution, the successful execution of a SQL statement or the failure of that SQL statement. And so uh, blind SQL injection is basically this. It's an injection that tricks the database into revealing the out the, whether or not a query has succeeded or failed. And it's basically employing a game of 20 questions on the back end well 200 or however many questions you need to get the information out of there it's actually an indirect way of getting the data out of the database but it's it's just as powerful uh, the way you can do this is to look for side channels uh, that indicate this thing one of the things with sql is that you can actually inject in sql a sleep and you can inject conditionals in sql and this allows you to play all sorts to do all sorts of powerful querying on that back end database uh, they often will utilize support for regular expressions. And so in MySQL, um, there are two ways of doing this kind of stuff. It's the like keyword and the regex uh, keyword. And if you haven't had a, a class that talks about regular expressions, these are patterns, uh, string pattern matching uh, libraries that are commonly used in computer science. And I don't, I don't, we don't actually have a formal I don't think that maybe CS311, uh, if you've taken 311, co uh, covers regular expressions, but this is something that I would uh, recommend that you look at uh, um, if you don't know a lot about regular expressions. Um, here's an example of a regular expression, actually. So this looks kind of crazy. Uh, I'll just briefly talk about parts of this. This says if the string begins with characters between zero and nine. So the hat means beginning of a string. The uh, square brackets means this is a range of characters to match against. And so if, the, if it begins with a zero or a nine, and then what well, this is for, this matches one character. And so any character from zero, zero to nine, any digit. Uh, and then the dollar means that this is the end of the string. So this is going to match any single digit. Uh, and that's the language of a regular expression. And so this is, uh, this is going to be useful when it comes to blind SQL. OK, uh, so SQL has, uh, just to give you an example of some uh, regular expression and string matching, uh, SQL has this if, like, and sleep. And we're going to use this to try and probe the database to find values in it. Uh, so the if is just like a program. Uh, if, if the SQL, uh, if this condition holds in that in that if statement, uh, uh, you would do the true outcome. Otherwise, you would do the false outcome. So this is the syntax of it. So you give it the condition, the true, and the false. Uh, and then the like is basically used similar to that regular expression to compare the results using wildcard, string wildcards uh, as the output. And so with the like, uh, if you specify in the matching a percent, the percent is, uh, is going to match zero or more characters. And I should mention the like and the regex have different syntaxes, but they're trying to do something similar. So percent is zero or more characters will match. The underscore matches exactly one character in, in a like statement. Uh, and then in this case, the sleep is going to pause the server for a specified number of seconds. And this is what you can encode in either the true or the false outcome to get that side channel that says whether or not the query succeeded or didn't. And this condition could be the results of a query. Uh, so you can start to see how this is going to be used. Uh, so here's an example. If the password field is like the binary, so it's treating this as a binary pay payload. If the password is like P4, uh, if this string, if it's exactly like this string, so there is no matching, there's no fuzzy matching in this one. So this is an exact match. And so if the password is uh, this, then sleep for five seconds, otherwise do nothing. Uh, so this query, if, you're, if you got an injection that doesn't say whether or not it, that it succeeds or doesn't, this will give you a delay of five if it does succeed. 
uh, and that gives you some information. Okay, regex is similar. Um, and so we just talked about the previous uh, regex uh, for that character. Here's another regex. Uh, it says, uh, if the password matches this regular expression, then this will return true in this uh, conjunction. So, so if, if the password begins with a character between little a and little z, so if the password starts with a lowercase character, then return true is what this will return. Okay. Um, you can use this in conjunction with the sleep to probe for the correctness of your password guess. So uh, this statement, uh, password regex hat foo and sleep five. What this is going to do, so uh, like uh, any programming language, there's a short circuiting uh, that happens with the uh, conjunction. As soon as this is false, this won't get executed. But if this is true, then you will get the delay of five. And so what this ends up being if, is if the password begins with foo, then you're gonna pause five seconds. Okay, uh, another interesting thing is the count predicate. So the count returns the number of rows in the database or in, in the query. And so what does this statement do? So select count star from information schema dot columns where table name is equal to users. Uh, what this is gonna do is gonna return the number of rows. Uh, the, so the number of columns in this table basically because it's actually the column names are, are, are actually, uh, well, the table name is actually rows, and then you're trying to count the number number of columns in that. And so what this is going to do is it, it's going to say if the number of rows from the table information schema dot columns from the table users is non-zero, sleep for five seconds. So this is going to check for the existence of the users table. And then uh, if it does exist, if this count is non-zero, it's going to sleep for five seconds. And so this can tell you whether or not there is a table named users in that backend database. That's what the what the count thing is doing. Okay, so now we're gonna use this facility to start exposing usernames and passwords uh, in the backend database. And so uh, we're gonna assume we have uh, an interactive SQL, because uh, basically uh, session, and we're gonna try and figure out the uh, the name, the password of Bob's uh, uh, account without actually trying to dump the actual account uh, password itself. So uh, say we're, we don't, we're, we're not able to get that directly. Oops, excuse me. Uh, we have to get it indirectly, uh, but we're gonna use this side channel, this blind uh, side channel attack uh, to do this. So this is the query that we might send in. So select password is admin from users where the username is Bob. And if the Bob's password is like the binary percent, sleep five, otherwise do nothing. Now this percent, it matches zero or more characters and it can be anything. So Bob's password, if Bob exists, is gonna match this, right? Because this matches everything. And so what what will happen is you'll get five seconds. Like if you send this query in, this will always delay five seconds because if, assuming Bob exists, this is going to match Bob's password regardless, and that's what you get. Now what I could do is I want to find Bob's password here, and so I'm going to say if the password is like uh, so the first character is A, and then the rest of the characters are wildcard. Uh, I'm going to test to see if that's actually going to match Bob's password. And if I get a, uh, if this basically doesn't sleep five, five seconds, then I know Bob's password doesn't begin with A because this thing is false. And then I'm going to try B. And if it's point two, then I know his password is not going to start with B. And I go all the way down through all the characters. And then I say C, no, doesn't work. D, doesn't work. I get to P and this thing waits five seconds. And now I know that his password matches, the first letter is P. And then because percent matches everything else, now I know Bob's password starts with, with P. Okay, I'm gonna just iterate because now I can try the second character. I know the first character is P. Uh, I will check PA. 
and it's like 0.2, so that, that thing isn't, isn't it. B isn't it, C isn't it. And then I get to P4, and that gives me five seconds. And so now the second character is P4 and so on. Uh, I get to the end and I'm like, okay, this is, uh, this matches, right? And then I'm gonna go again. I'm gonna try A and it doesn't match. B doesn't match. I go through all the characters and they don't match. And then I'm like, oh, uh, okay. So this is not it. Let me just try password exactly. And then this gives me five seconds. And so I know that's the stopping condition. And then I know his password is this. This is basically what you're gonna do for your second homework, only done better because you're gonna use regular expressions and binary searching. <laughs> this is a linear search. This is painful, right? Like this is like, this is like a lot of queries, right? Especially if, if people are like, we were talking about getting blocked by your, like that other 2FA assignment getting you blocked. Uh, if someone sees all of these queries going across, you might also get blocked. Uh, and so you don't wanna linearly do this. Uh, you want to do something different. If you have regular expressions, then you can do a binary search on this. And that's what we're going to talk about uh, next. Okay, are there questions about this, this process of being able to get the password out of the database without actually getting, with using a side channel um, attack, basically? Okay, so what I'm going to do is take you through an example. So uh, this is the Natus Web Security CTF. Um, uh, again, this is one of the most fun CTFs I've ever done, um, but, and it's all web security CTFs. Um, uh, this is an example of a vulnerable web application written in PHP. And so the backend database has a user's table and it's got a username and password. And what you're trying to do is you have an, a user that you're trying to attack and the user is Natus 16. Like in order to get to Natus 16, you have to find the Natus 16 username and then actually figure out what the password is. And that will get you out of level 15 and into 16. And so this is the PHP application. It says, what username are you looking for? And then based on that username, this is the injection vulnerability. I'm gonna select from users where that username is whatever I've been given. But, uh, and then I'm gonna run that query. And that query is like, which this is the link to the database that I have. Okay, so with that query, I'm not gonna actually return the results back, right? This is the blind part of it. If you look at this application, if, if this is non-zero, then uh, I'm gonna basically say user doesn't exist. Otherwise, I'm gonna say user does exist. So it doesn't actually give me any information except this uh, or an error, but I won't use the error. So uh, we're gonna use this to find out the password of that user. Um, and so one of the things that you can, uh, you would do as an adversary, they give you the source code for this level actually. Uh, but if you did foo or nata 16, you would actually get, oh yeah. Uh, well, foo would give you the user doesn't exist because there's, there's only one user in this table. And nata 16, because it doesn't have an injection that would give you uh, uh, the actual user back. Uh, but if you look, the next thing that you would try is, let's try Nata 16 with a single quote. In all the previous examples, the single quote worked to break syntax on the SQL query. I'm showing you this example because if you look at the SQL query that you're injecting into, the query is delimited by double quotes uh, in, in PHP, and then the actual use SQL, the username in SQL is also delimited by a double quote. So a single quote isn't meaningful in the SQL that statement that you produce. So this actually won't break syntax. However, if you give it NATA 16 with the double quote, then, then what happens here is that this actually is gonna break out of this syntax of this SQL query. And that's what I wanted to show you uh, here. Uh, so in this case, all of your, all of your break, the, the SQL injections will be using double quotes, and then you can inject the or one is equal to one uh, predicate, match that double quote, or if you're going to do the comment character, you only need to break it once. Okay. So um, this is how you would attack this particular level using binary search. So we showed you linear search with Bob's password. 
With NATA 16, you would like, I mean, you could use linear search on NATA 16 as well. It would just take you a long time because these are all the characters that you're gonna search. And so this is basically what, 52, 62 characters. Every, you know, on average, you're gonna go through 31 of these things uh, per character. That's too much. We're computer scientists and we wanna use regular expressions. And uh, SQL does have regular expression support, right? Like uh, you're, you can use the regex to make this easier. And that's what we're gonna do. Uh, and so in this case, this is the character search list for the password. Uh, it's just alphanumeric. And so the first query I am going to run to see what this NATA 16 uh, accounts password is, is this one. I'm gonna query against the first half of this search string, of this search list. The first half of the potential characters, and I'm gonna see that this user doesn't exist. So what does that tell me? It tells me that the first character is either, it goes from capital V to, to little z. Now what I can do is I can take, I know the character is here, I can break this thing in half and the next query will go from capital V to little j. And so now I've halved the search space, right? Uh, and so from here, because if this thing says the user exists, that means I guessed correctly. If the user didn't exist, then I would know that the character is from little k to, to little z, and I would take the, the first half of that, that range. So this is how we're gonna do the binary searching for this password. And this is homework number two uh, that I want you to, to program. Okay, so then this user exists. Uh, so I know the character is in this range. I can cut this range in half and then search the subsequent range and I'll do the front half. And so the next query is capital V through to, to little b. And if this runs and it gives me that this user exists, then I know it's in the first half of this. So then I'll query V through X, and then this user exists again. And so I'll take the first half again, I'll query V, and the user doesn't exist. So now I know it's either W or X, so I'll query W, and the user exists. And this is my stopping condition for this round, right? Now I know that this password begins with W, and I can repeat this exact same process using this query string. I know it begins with W. And so now my next round, I can say hat W and then repeat this binary search on the second character. And so this is what I want your program to do. Because now I'm gonna use the second character, search the first half again. The user doesn't exist. So then I can come back here and, and do the first half of the remaining. The user does exist. So it's similar to the last round. Uh, the user does exist. This is similar to the last round. Uh, and then this one, I'm, I'm searching this range and it does not exist. So this is a little different. That means the, it's either Y, Z, A, or B. So then I'm gonna search for Y and Z. It doesn't exist. And then it's, now it's little A or little B. So I search for little A and the user exists and I get the second character. So rather than going through every single character, I'm doing a binary search, and this is basically log of 64 rather than, or log of 62 rather than a linear search of 31 characters. Uh, so this is your program, homework number two. Okay. Uh, questions about, about this? So yeah, homework number two, write a program that leverages blind SQL injection in a site to find the password for an administrator account. Uh, this is done, so uh, the Natus one is done through a web form. It turns out all sorts of data in your web application can be vulnerable to a SQL injection attack. In this particular SQL injection attack, it's done in the cookie, because you're often injecting cookies into, into databases. And so the SQL injection vulnerability, uh, the code lab walks you through it, how to show that the SQL in injection is there. And so you'll be injecting it into a cookie rather than the, the uh, web form. And uh, I want you to use the binary search uh, algorithm on the lowercase characters and numbers. I believe they tell you the password isn't, doesn't have an uppercase character in it. 
And then uh, I want you to use uh, uh, Python, obviously, to, uh, to and beautiful soup for parsing the results to make sure you can figure out whether or not the query returns true or false. Uh, as part of this homework, there's an initial script I give you. Uh, there's a sequence of things I want you to follow before you uh, go off and implement your program. Um, make sure you add an appropriate terminating condition. And then everything else is done similar to homework number one. 